is Penny Reeves, and I'm the instructor for Online Florida School of Real Estate. And in this session, I am going to review Unit 2. If you are in the market to get your real estate license or prepared to take your real estate license exam, then I suggest you pay attention. Okay, this is just a quick review on Unit 2. I'm going to be doing all the units in a quick fashion like this, just as a quick review. Here we go. So, Unit 2, Real Estate License Law and Qualification for Licensure. So, before the real estate business was regulated, the policy of caveat emptor, a Latin term meaning let the buyer beware, prevailed. Regulation came about to protect the public. Before the latter part of the 19th century, the real estate business was unorganized and extremely competitive. In 1923, the legislator passed the Real Estate License Law, Chapter 475 of the Florida Statutes. In 1925, the Florida legislator created the Florida Real Estate Commission to administer and enforce the license law. The legislature granted the commission authority to keep records and conduct investigations, as well as the power to grant, deny, and suspend and revoke licenses. The Florida Real Estate Commission is also called the Commission or the FRAC, Florida Real Estate Commission for FRAC. Today, the, vision, the Division of Real Estate, the DRE, provides support services to the Commission. The DRE is under the Department of Business and Professional Regulation. The Florida Constitution provides for the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of government, just like in the federal. They provide the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of government. The executive branch, governor or president, executes the programs and policies that are adopted by the legislature. Policies are implemented by the Department of Executive Branch, including the Department of Business and Professional Regulation. Florida Statute 20 is titled Organizational Structure. This chapter, 20, establishes the structure of the executive branch of government. Okay? Florida Statute 475 establishes the legal rights and responsibilities of real estate licensees and appraisers. Part 1 pertains to the real estate brokerage. Real estate licensees are responsible for knowing the provisions of this chapter. Chapter 1, okay, you must know this chapter. The Florida Real Estate Commission implements, interprets, and enforces the regulatory provisions of Chapter 475. Part 2 pertains to the real estate appraisers and sets forth requirements for licensed and certified appraisers. Part 3 of Chapter 475, known as the Commercial Real Estate Sales Commission Lien Act. Okay, This gives the broker lien rights for earned commissions. This act applies only to commercial properties. Okay, The lien is against the owner's net proceeds and personal property from the sale and does not attach to the commercial real property. Okay, part four gives brokers the lien rights for earned commissions associated with a brokerage agreement to lease commercial real estate. Okay, this is to lease commercial real estate. They have a right to do this. Okay, to do a lien. Florida Statute 120 
This is the Administrative Procedure Act for Statute 120. This defines the procedural process by which regulatory agencies decide and implement agency action. The licensing and disciplinary process for real estate licensees is outlined in this chapter. Chapter 61J2 is the rules of the Florida Real Estate Commission. It is set of administrative rules developed by the Florida Real Estate Commission. It's pursuant to the rules making process that are outlined in Chapter 120. I'm going to go through these and I'm going to show you all of these as we go along through this course. Okay. Chapter 455 defines the practices and procedures for the Department of Business and Professional Regulations, the DBPR and for all professions regulated by the DBPR, including real estate. This law also mandates what actions the DBPR may take in regulating licenses. Licensees who fail to comply with the provision of this chapter can be disciplined by the FRIC. Yes, they can be disciplined. There are three categories of real estate licenses, okay? There are broker, broker associate, and sales associate. Getting your license, it's the opposite. You're a sales associate, then you become a broker. And then you can be a broker associate, start what you choose. So, a sales associate must work under the direction and control of an employer. Most often, the employer is a broker. However, a sales associate may choose to work for an owner developer. A sales associate is a person who performs real estate services for compensation or consideration, but does not under the direct but does so under the direction, control, and management of an active broker or an owner developer. An owner developer is an unlicensed entity, such as a real estate development company, that sells, exchanges, or leases its own property. Okay, its own property. The developer's sales staff must hold an active real estate licensee in order to be paid on a commission basis, on a per deal basis. Okay. The sales staff is exempt from licensure if paid strictly on a salaried basis. A broker is a person for another, who for another, for compensation or other consideration, performs real estate services. A broker license requirements include additional education, additional experience, and passing the broker license exam. Okay. A broker associate are licensed as broker, which means you qualify as a broker, but you choose to work under the direction of a broker employer. Sales associate and broker associates are agents of their employer. Okay, sales associate and broker associates are agents of their employer. To become a licensed candidate, a candidate begins by submitting an application to the Department of Business and Professional Regulation, DBPR for short. Okay, that's at myfloridalicense.com. You can apply for a licensee online at myfloridalicense.com. The DBPR is required to waive the initial license fee for eligible low-income applicants. So think about that. The applicant must provide the background information, what discloses 
that discloses whether an applicant has been convicted of a crime, pleaded guilty to a crime, or pleaded no lo contendere, the no contest. Even if a court action known as adjudication was withheld, you must disclose. Okay. Applicants must be at least 18 years of age and have earned a high school diploma or its equivalent. Okay. U.S. citizenship is not required, and applicants do not have to be Florida residents. Applicants must, however, possess a social security number. The DPPR waives the initial license fee for a member of the armed services that has served on active duty. The fee waiver also applies to a spouse who has mar who was married to the active duty member during a period of active duty and to a surviving spouse of a member of the armed services who at the time of death was serving on active duty. The DPPR waives the initial application fee, the initial license fee, and the unlicensed activity fee for military veterans and their spouses who apply for a real estate license within 60 months after honorable discharge from an armed services. Applicants must also submit their fingerprints electronically as part of the license application process. The commission in its monthly meetings reviews the summary of applicants that have criminal history records. The commission will vote to approve or deny the applications. Once the application for licensure has been received, the DPPR has 30 days to return the initial application for errors or omissions. Upon receipt of the acceptable application, the DPPR has 90 days to approve or deny the application. The license application, the application expires two years after it has been received by the DPPR. A person who has resided continuously in Florida for four or more months is considered a Florida resident for application purposes. Once applicants have passed the state licensing exam, they are issued a license. The license serves as a prima facie evidence that an individual holds a current and valid license, just like your driver's license. U.S. citizenship is not required, as I mentioned, to hold a Florida real estate license. If the licensee becomes a non-resident of Florida, the licensee, if you are already licensed, must notify the commission within 60 days of change of residency and comply with all non-resident requirements. Florida grants reciprocity to U.S. Armed Services members and their spouses. Okay? Reciprocity. The DPBR, DBPR, will issue a real estate license to active duty and former active duty members and their spouses who hold a valid license, real estate license, from another state, any state, okay? If you're in the military. Some states are approved for what's called mutual recognition, okay? We, they mutually recognize their schooling. With the Florida Real Estate Commission, front for sure. Mutual recognition is a contractual agreement between Florida and another state to recognize each other's real estate education and experience requirements. A licensee from the state would from another from that state would have to pass a 40 question Florida specific real estate law exam with the grade of at least a 75 in order to become licensed in Florida. Mutual recognition applicants must be non-residents of Florida. You can't live in Florida. A resident of Florida, if you live in Florida, who is licensed and a mutual recognition state cannot apply for a Florida real estate license under mutual recognition if you already live in Florida. 
okay? So let's review the qualification for licensure. A Florida is a, in Florida, a sales associate applicant must be 18 years of age, have a high school diploma or equivalent, or it's equivalent, must possess a social security number, must be honest, truthful, trustworthy, and be of good character, have a reputation for fair dealing, and be competent and qualified to make real estate transactions and conduct negotiations with safety to investors and others. Sales associate candidates must comply with course one, which includes passing the end of course exam after successfully completing the pre-licensing education requirement. Applicants must pass the state license exam with a 75. I'm sorry, yes, with a 75. If an applicant does not pass the state licensing, licensing exam within two years after the course completion date, the course completion expires and the applicant must complete the pre-licensing education course again. Okay, so after two years, if you haven't taken your state exam, you're going to have to do it all over again. Sales associates must complete a 45-hour post-licensing course prior to their first renewal of their license, which is two years within 24 months of when you got your license. Okay, you usually do in March or September. We'll go over that in more detail later on. Failure to complete this requirement, required post-licensing course will result in the license becoming null and void, no good in the basura, trash. Okay, that's that all over again. So you miss your 45 hour, you start all over again, or you pick and choose a different career, yes. All right, so upon completion of the post-licensing education requirement during the initial license period, Active and inactive licensees must complete their 14-hour continuing education during every two-year period that follows. So after you've done your 45, you're going to do 14 hours every two years for the rest of your life or as long as you hold your license. I've been doing it since the 90s. The continuing education requirement must include three hours of core law to update real estate-related rules and statutes, and another three hours devoted to ethics and business practices. Broker applicants must complete an experience requirement in addition to the educational requirements. Broker applicants must complete 24 months of real estate experience, which means you have to have your real estate license for at least two years during the five years preceding the application to become a broker. Okay. The experience can be completed in one of three ways. You can hold an active sales associate license under a Florida broker or a broker license in another state. It doesn't have to be a Florida broker. If you have two years experience working under another broker anywhere in the United States, then you can upgrade that license here in Florida by taking the broker course. So, hold an active sales associate license while working as a salary employee for a government agency and performing real estate duties counts, okay? Hold a active broker's license in another state. Note that working under an owner developer, okay, a builder, this will not satisfy the experience requirement unless the owner developer is an active broker as well. Okay? All right. So once the broker has got their license, their broker must complete a 60 of her post licensing course before their first renewal of the broker license of two years. Okay? Two years. Individuals who have a, earned a four-year degree or higher in real estate are exempt from the pre-licensing course requirements for sales associate and brokers. They must, however, complete the post-licensing 
and continuing education requirements. Florida attorneys who are active members of the Florida Real Estate Bar are exempt from the sales associate pre-licensing course and continuing education requirements. They are not exempt from the broker pre-license course requirements or the post-licensing education requirement for sales associate and brokers, okay? We will now discuss what is called services of real estate. It's very important that you memorize them. You can use an acronym, A Bar Sale, as a memory tool for brokerage services. A is for advertising, B is for buying, A is for appraising, R is for renting or providing rental information. Now we go to sale. S is for selling, A is for auctioning, L is for leasing, and E is for exchanging. Okay? Must know these. A bar sale. A real estate license is required if a person performs any real estate services for compensation or the implied intent to collect compensation, unless specifically exempt. Okay. It can be exempt. But compensation includes in the form of salary, bonuses, commissions, and gratuities. It also is things of value such as dinner, flowers, wine, and so forth. A real estate license is not required to sell cemetery lots. Nope, you don't need a license to sell cemetery lots. Or for renting mobile home lots in a mobile home park. Okay. A floor broker may pay a referral fee to a broker license in another state. As long as that foreign broker does not violate any of the Florida laws, real estate attorneys may not receive compensation for preferred real estate services, including referrals of clients, okay, and prospects, unless they also hold a real estate license. So if there are just enough money, they can't receive, receive in commission, pay, anything like that, unless they have a license as well. All right. Salary managers of condominiums or cooperative apartment complexes are exempt from licensure, provided the rentals are for a period of one year or less. Okay? Also exempt are leasing agents of apartment complexes who, working on site rental offices, in a leasing capacity, provided they are paid a salary or hourly. There is no restriction on the duration of rental leases for this exemption, as long as they're working on site and working for the owner. Please subscribe if you'd like to hear some more. Um, I will be going through all the units, one after another. This was unit two. Next one is unit three. Again, thank you so much for watching. You hope you have a wonderful day.